morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, beans. How are you today? Wait. Yeah. There. No. <laughs> Helps if I turn the right things on, doesn't it? There. Yeah. We don't have background music today. It turns out because Brezel is down. So I'm just gonna turn on the game music for the the intro today. But yeah. Oh my, it, it, you gotta show me. I do wanna see pictures, Re. I do wanna see pictures. And yeah, um, if you uh, don't have my link, uh, just send me a message on Discord because I do wanna see that. Um, if you weren't here yesterday, Re was actually uh, sewing, right? Not stitching. Sewing the back? I'm, yeah, I'm really curious. I hate when, when my hands are resting on the desk and I'm standing here like I'm ready to play an invisible piano. <laughs> uh, but yeah, how are you today? Happy Friday, happy Friday. Yeah, probably not a whole lot. <laughs> that kind of suing is not very profitable. No, thank you for the head pet. Good morning, Eternal. How did you sleep? But yeah, um, I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, let me see. So yeah, if you want to just send me a picture, I will totally show that because I am really curious about that. Um, as soon as I figure out where my browser went. Well, maybe not in the... Do I need to be here? There it is. Oh, that is never nice. Uh, stop having bad dreams. Bad dreams. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, on the other hand, um... I, I had a good friend who was really into lucid dreaming and worked really hard on enabling lucid dreaming and then regretted it for years after because he didn't like his dreams. So I suppose there are always two sides to the, the story. But yeah, um, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to start with Vampire. Um, let me. I'm, I'm. If I'm a bit derpy today, I apologize. I am. I am still not fit. There was a reason I didn't actually go to work yesterday because I was just brain dead. And um, yeah, ever since the dental thing on Tuesday, uh, it hasn't fully healed, and I still have this lingering, annoying pressure pain. So I'm always a bit meh. <laughs> so yeah. If I'm a bit derpy, I apologize. It's it's just, it's part of this week, it feels like. Hmm. But yeah, um, what are we doing today? We're starting the day with Vampire. Though we're not gonna um, play it all day long. Because we are gonna switch over to a really cute demo that Kit stumbled across and shoved it my way because he knew how much I would love it, for a game called Covert... Covert Critter? It's Covert Critter, not Covert Critter, I'm pretty sure. I'm not good at these things, you know that. <laughs> but yeah, that is a game we're gonna go to later. It's essentially a Metal Gear Solid stealth game with furries. Looks adorable and is very, very old school. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Stuff doesn't want to open correctly today. Um. Hmm. Um. What is the image too big? Not sure. But yeah, uh, if you have an image or link or anything, 
Uh, definitely feel free to, to to throw it over. I'd be really, really curious. But yeah, like I said, that's what we're gonna do today. A oh, what not? I had some Discord issues early. I wonder if that has something to do with it. Let me see if I can just send you a message first. Oh. Yeah, that is weird. It actually... I see it too. It... Uh, I sent you a friend request. I wonder if it has something to do with the Discord outage. Because... Yeah, I had some issues with that too recently. Oh, I like that. Okay, hold me on. Uh, let me go. Hold on, let me... Throw it up. Yeah, that is that is some impressive work, but let me show it. I mean look at that bag. That is that is some custom stitching work. Look at that labor of love. That is some really fine detail. How long did it take you to do this whole thing? I mean, that is... Yeah, that is a labor of love. And it does feel a lot like Vampire. <laughs> it definitely could be uh, merchandise. I can definitely see that. Oh, that's not bad. I would have expected a lot more than eight hours. Especially if you look at the the detail here, all the zigzag. Yeah, I think it's clear this isn't your first project. <laughs> I think that is very clear. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. If it's your first project, then you're just really good. But yeah, I'm gonna uh, hop in my corner because for now. We're going back to Vampire. Which is once again stuck in this weird mode where my gamepad turns into a mouse cursor. And the weird thing is not even held back by the window. So if I now move my my cursor to one side of the screen, it will just slide out and <laughs> move the mouse over my desktop. That is one of the weirdest control bugs I've seen. But yeah, I imagine that this is not your first. You can usually see, like, I I have zero skill. I, I literally, for this kind of stuff, zero skill. But I have a good eye for what has been done with skill. Like, I can, it's, it's very easy to see for me if something looks professionally done. And these stitches, shit ton of work. So, yeah, my respect. It looks really nice. But yeah. Let's see, uh, where were we today? The dock is stable and we can't meet the one person we still need to heal. The hospital is stable and everyone is healed. The white chapel area is stable and those two we can't access yet. So we are now at the point where we need to head. Hold on, gotta make sure I face the right direction, yeah. Uh, yeah, we now gotta make sure we head back and then sleep. Oh, and uh, while you're still here, Ree, I have a question for you. When you played this game, who did you embrace? Like, I had this heck of a time looking at the hospital. Come on, there we go. Looking at the hospital and looking at, for example, like Thomas and Thelma here. Or, you know, our suicide attempt, Mortimer. It's like, did you embrace them? I feel so bad embracing anyone that I feel like still has a chance or could get better. Like, and so far, I feel like going for a only killing evil people it's kind of fun. Oh, so you, did, you didn't even kill evil people? Like, I mean, just take Edvina as an example. I think Edvina was her name, wasn't it? Yeah. 
at Vina and Booth, I'm like I have I have absolutely no regret killing those two. Because I feel like London will be better off without them. So at least five playthroughs, huh? <laughs> And yeah, I would be so curious to do a second playthrough and just slaughter everyone. Like, I mean, uh, I noticed that Lady Ashcroft, Ash Ashburn, Ashcroft, what was her name? She requires like a level 20 or 30. And I, I'm pretty sure you'll never reach that. I'm pretty sure you can't do her, can you? I'm pretty sure she is just Ashbury, yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't actually embrace her, can you? Do you ever get that strong? I don't even know where she was. But I'd see her somewhere here. Yeah, I, I kind of thought so. I mean, she's like a century-old vampire, and they probably only list the embrace level to make fun of you, to to hint at how powerful she actually is. But yeah, I, I, I was pretty certain that you will never get her to be yours. But it would be interesting how much XP you get out of that. Anyway, while we're here... I'm gonna take another look. But yeah, I do not have what I need to upgrade either of my weapons. So let's get the treatments ready. I'm gonna get these ready. There, so we have a little bit and now let's follow the story. Oh, eternal. I'll sleep better. Just do it. I need to make sure. It's locked, all right. It's yeah. locked. Hey, Katna. How are you today? Okay, let's talk to him about the blood. There's nothing to steal here, is there? No. I feel much better. I'm still a bit derpy. Um, but the whole dentist thing on Tuesday has been... rough. For me to gain back my composure. composure. But uh, I'm slowly getting there. And yeah, today we're going to start our day with Vampire. And uh, later on, I'm going to go and switch over to a demo that Kit found for me called Covert Critter. Essentially a furry Metal Gear Solid, but absolutely adorable. Just not sure how much content it has. So I'm going to start with this first. Evening, Edgar. Could I get your professional opinion? Please speak, but I have something important to tell you. This strain of flu, it's very different from the one I saw in Europe. It's downright peculiar. Really? What makes you say that? I've just looked at the blood of one of our recently deceased. I see. Do you have anything more to go on? This disease spreads and looks like the Spanish flu, but its effects differ greatly. The London strain is different from the continental one. This is very interesting. Did you find something else? Uh... Why would I not share it with him? I... Mm. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure there are still things I don't know about him, but I need to trust some people. Yes. Unlike the flu, the infected begin to show an increase in outwardly aggressive behavior. More than simple agitation. Once docile people become violent. You mean like rabies? Is there a chance we could create a vaccine, Jonathan, like Pasteur? By the stove, that would be smashing. There's a lot we're not seeing here. But it is spreading, and quickly. If we don't act, the whole city could be lost. But Jonathan, we've a fantastic opportunity sitting right here in front of us. A weapon of choice. What on earth do you mean? Why you, my dear boy? With your expertise and your blood, we could isolate the properties that course through your veins. Think about the possibilities. I may turn London into my realm. <laughs> oh, it feels like there are there are some consequences waiting here for that decision. Hmm. I admit it did occur to me. Blood seems to be the common factor in all of this. I totally agree. We're in uncharted territory here. Maybe it's just wishful thinking, but imagine the possibilities. We'll discuss this more later. Thank you for your time. No, thank you, Jonathan. But as I said, I needed to talk to you. I have some rather bad news. Yes? I'm afraid it's your sister. My sister. She's to be buried this evening at Whitechapel Cemetery. Your mother published the obituary this morning. I see. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Please accept my condolences. I need to talk to you, Edgar. Please do so. Let's see if we had anything else. Nurse Crane will not be returning to Pembroke Hospital. Oh, really? Did something happen? She seems such a very capable woman. <sighs> yeah, I, I had the feeling I should especially speak to the leading characters more often. But yeah, Ree, you go. Have a wonderful day. Um, thank you for coming on in and... Uh, saying hi and yeah enjoy your friday <laughs> see you next time uh, should i be out right yeah she was blackmailing lady ashbury thought she was murdering patients as some sick upper class game nurse crane was playing a dangerous game she's lucky lady ashbury abhors violence uh, quite possible so you manage a hospital financed by a vampire? Yes. Pembroke was founded by Lady Ashbury. She's also our largest donor. A convenient yet expensive way to have a fresh supply of blood on hand, day and night, don't you think? All vampires drink blood by nature. Me, I praise the lady's exemplary moral fiber. And she did just kill a person out there. If I may inquire, how did you meet her? Well, Jonathan, she sought me out and offered me the position. It's been a very profitable partnership for both parties. Do you know anything about the vampire hunters in the East End? Without a doubt, it's the guard of Prewen, zealots to the last man. Where do they come from? Once they shared the Brotherhood's ideology on non-intervention, but they concluded vampires were a scourge. They're definitely well organized and equipped. They're extremely dangerous and not to be trifled with. To them, you're a feral beast, and I, your accomplice. We'll talk later. 
Okay. Do I want to rest? No, I think I'm gonna go and do exactly what it tells me to. I'm gonna attend the funeral. Because so far, I don't need the XP. I never thought I would have to attend my murdered sister's funeral. Mary, I can't forgive myself. I'll find the truth about what happened to us. I swear. No, I forgot what I just was talking about before he interrupted me. <laughs> I have this thirst for blood. Every now and then I see a sparkle in the corner of my eyes and think it's loot. So here's some... Actually, yes. Yes, good idea, Ketna. Thank you. So here's a fun fact. Um, while I'm running there, I 100%ed uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Really enjoyed it. And you know how they just brought out a free update that adds like new enemies in a new area and a rogue-like mode and just they really upgraded the game. So I checked Steam and noticed that it's now like only 65% positive. You know what they did to Ghostwire Tokyo one year after release? They added De Nouveau. One year into the game's release. Like, what's the point? And yeah, th and the reviews are exactly what you would expect. They are like, fuck de nuovo, <laughs> performance, yay. But why? Dear sister, I don't know if I have the strength. I mean, yeah, yeah, I remember when I played this awesome pirated game a year ago. Oh, I wish I could replay it, but I suppose I can't. Ah, oh, must have missed so many sales, all these <sighs> selling the game to pirates who already finished it a year ago. I think I know what the game is, yeah. I remember seeing someone play it once. It's a few years old, isn't it? I don't think it's a recent game. Because I have faint memories of it not only being a really good game, but also hearing that it was out of print for a while. Yeah, but like uh, three, four years? Oh, okay, now then I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, board games are just one of those things. Like, my parents were never into it. Um, none of my friends were ever into it. So I just, I never got into board games. And nowadays, I'm like, I wouldn't even know where to play board games. I don't have like a dining table or something because we need that room for VR. So it's like unless it's a video game board game, I'm probably 
Yep. <laughs> And even then, um, it's like one issue I have with board games recently is that we have so many board games that feel like they would have done much better as a video game. Or board games that feel like they should have been video games that have, you know, so many rules to take care of that if I just have a, a computer taking care of it, it would be so much better. And and then uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to say that the best board game ever is one I dislike, but I'm sorry, Gloomhaven? I hate it. I, I hate this artificial restriction on turns. I think it's a dumb choice, and I will stand by my word that it's a dumb choice. If I am in a room and there are three items of loot left, I'm not gonna go like, oh, I have no turns left to pick up these $500 that are laying there. I need to go to the next room now. I'm sorry, I can't deal with dumb limitations. And Gloomhaven... It was Gloomhaven, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's like the number one culprit in that... I, I hate it. It makes no sense and it completely destroys the joy in the game to me. I know. I know it's an awesome game. And yeah, I mean, it was fun. Uh, you can play, yeah, Mansions of Madness. You can play each mission once. And then you know what it's about and it's not fun anymore and it's boring. And, and there are what, like 10 missions? They take an hour each and then you're wrapped up and no I, I i wasn't a big fan i have to admit <laughs> but hey avant laws how are you today welcome on in make yourself comfortable and yes i know mentions of madness is great and has so much randomness and but you know what in the end you're still playing a video game that forces you to act out on a board game and yet you can't play it without a tablet because it's a video game. Just give me it as a video game. Done. Give me a $20 Steam download that has Mansions of Madness integrated and it's a video game and it's good. Why do I need to play a... a map-based... Since I can't reveal myself to my mother now, I must find a discreet spot to attend the ceremony. Why do I need to play a game that requires maps and that has a tablet that tells me exactly what I need to do, when I need to do it, and how I need to do it. Why can't I just play that on the tablet to start with? Mother, why have you come here? This is proving far worse than I imagined. <laughs> but... I'm fine with that, then it's a board game, then make it a DM. But having a tablet DM for me, well then why can't I just play on the tablet or on the PC if that's already where the game takes place anyway? I am the resurrection and the light. Like, I'm, just, I'm just gonna pause real quick, sorry for the rant, but like if it's already digital and if it already expects me to enter what I do digitally, why, why do I need the board game? That's my problem with it. It's I would love the game if it was just online. And, you know, I could start a game and I could invite you and, and Karth and let's invite five more people and then play a game. But no, I, I need to put a, a, a tablet into my tabletop game and buy expensive 3D printed figures because Kickstarters and... You know what? I... I can buy figures and still play that game online and just collect the figures. <laughs> he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We commend unto thy hands of mercy, most merciful Father. 
the soul of our sister departed, and we commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Why kill my Mary and stick her here in this cold, god-awful place? <laughs> These are the legal requirements for the epidemic, man. Oh, Avery, I feel so tired. Please take me home. Yes, madam. <laughs> It's interesting that they would bury people at night while they are clearly zombies in the graveyard. But I suppose you gotta do it somewhere. Oh, Mary. What have I done? If I could only change one thing. One thing. This is a nightmare. Jonathan, there is nothing you can do but accept it. What brings you here? I thought you could use the company. I am so sorry for your loss, Jonathan. She was a good person. Vibrant, full of life. She was kindness incarnate, my Mary. You're a good person, Jonathan. And a young Ekon. A newborn cast into the night without so much as a candle to guide your way. She had been scouring the most dangerous parts of London in search of me. And it led to her death. Jonathan, don't. I still hear her last thoughts. They echo in my head. Her mind shattered and... And it haunts me. Jonathan, stop. Listen carefully. You must come to terms with this. You must learn to live with what happened. I'm learning. Every night is a new lesson. What I am, what I must do to survive. But my sister, she shouldn't have suffered because of my weakness. Don't you see? You're doing the work of our enemies, feeding your remorse. We are weakest when we grieve, and the guilt blurs our senses. And so this is why you're here, to warn me. You felt this pain yourself. You too have endured this. I don't want to lose you, Jonathan. I've lost so many friends, loved ones I cherished. Pray for Mary's forgiveness. If you must. He that's a tough one. I'm not a religious man. You should know that. This is not about you forgiving yourself. This is for her. This is you telling Mary how sorry you are. What should I do then? St. Mary's Church is not far from here. Go there and make your peace. Find the solace you need. My lady wants me to confess. No, Jonathan. It's you who wants to confess, I think. Yeah, this is such good writing. With the music and all. Really stellar. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm not saying board games are bad. Board games are dumb. That's like saying CDs or LPs are dumb because you can get it digitally. No, it's not. Absolutely not. And, you know, it's for each their own. I'm just, I didn't grow up with it. 
And yeah, I, I mean, in all fairness, CDs are kind of dumb, so <laughs> I suppose there is that. Um, but it's, yeah, and figurines are great. So I, I agree. I just, I never grew up with physical items. I don't have board games. I never had board games. I barely had any physical books. I bought myself a Kindle very early on when I got into reading. And I love my ebooks. I love my audiobooks. I listen to podcasts. But I wouldn't even have a single player for physical media. I don't have a single CD-ROM drive in the car at home. Um, if you would give me a CD today of the music you made, I'd be like, where can I download it? <laughs> it's... So I understand people that want physical books, that want to smell paper and all. It's just, it's never been a thing for me. And I think that's why I'm just not into board games. It's, it's pretty much that simple. I'm a digital person. And off to church he goes, a newborn seeking divine consent to lick the blood from the soft and pointy crown. Who are you? Make yourself known. Newborn, you reek of guilt and pointless compassion. Shed your skin, forget your old weaker self. What do you want from me? Ascalon does not approve of lone wolves who bring unwanted eyes to our pastures. So your name is Ascalon? <laughs> Ascalon's will is vampire law. Learn them, abide by them, or I shall return as your judge and jury. It would help These if you tell me. Immortals try my patience with their plans and unsolicited counsel. Like, watch the rules. What are the rules? I'm not going to tell you. Go away. <laughs> and yeah, I, like I said, tabletop simulators as close as it gets, because surprise, it's digital. And. I'll be honest with you, I had I had a lot of fun setting up tabletop simulator and you know, making sure everyone has their nice playing field and setting up scripts and but I spent 15 hours setting up one game and then we play for 3 hours and move on and it's like, I love it, but in all honesty, I think I love the setup more than the playtime. I want to do it again. I just... It's it's difficult for me to really enjoy board games. Because I always get cranky about the things that I feel like would be better in a digital version. I know I'm a horrible person when it comes to that. I'm very picky. And yeah, um, same same story there. I I enjoyed the game. I I played it once. I like it, it's a good game. But would I play it again? Not really. It's competitive, and I'm already not a fan of competitive games. If it was co-op, absolutely. It's I think that's the one reason why I enjoyed Mansions of Madness because it's an actual co-op game. Yeah, I know. It's, I sound cranky and old when I sound like that. You kids in your board games. What's that? I hate this jump. 
I really do, especially because I was in the middle of a heal. And it immediately stops everything and then kills you. <laughs> hey Shin, how are you today? <laughs> Hope you're having a good day. Now, I think at this point, the, the game is just telling me that I should rest and level up. Like it's, this is now the point again, where it's like ham fisting that rule to me. Not quite, though. <laughs> yes. Yes, the voiceover is always great when you have underscore names. Let's go up. Let's do the preven. Uh, I know that feeling, Shin. I... Went to bed at midnight, and at like 5 a.m. my body was like, you know, you know, what you haven't done in a long time, you haven't gotten up. Take him down first. are tough. But they are fun. It's an actual challenging combat. I felt like he gave me a, an easy time. Whenever my body tells me it doesn't want to sleep in, I just take that as a clear sign. And get up and do something completely different. <laughs> Usually just play a video game. Always always a good time. I might have uh, recently gotten addicted to Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Because it's just one of the best city builders in complexity. Let me Would see. you like me to revive you? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Change revive your mind, me. Mr. Reed? Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Should we have anything else? What do else? you know about Nurse Crane and her dispensary? That woman is a saint. She's living proof that a strong will is sometimes all you need to make a difference. Goodbye, okay. Miss. Take care of yourself. As Nothing else? You see, but I don't think he has anything else. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Have you any news of Nurse Crane and her dispensary? I'll never know what goes on in that place. 
But as long as people are getting better, I'll stop investigating her. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Okay, now where do we have to go? Somewhere here? Yes? What is it that you want? I'm sorry to disturb you at such a late hour. No worries, my son. I'm still quite awake, having just returned from a funeral. Yes, I know. I've forgotten what I wanted. I don't know. May I help you, child? You seem somewhat perturbed. I haven't the strength to cross the threshold. I wish to pray, to cleanse my soul. The church is shut by order of the bishop, but I'm still the vicar of St. Mary's, if that is any use to you, my son. Uh. You seem to me a good soul, vicar, but this is a personal matter. There are no secrets from God, my son. If your heart needs comfort, consider me your chapel, for I can be as silent as stone. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any harm in just being honest. And, I mean, he he's not going to say he's a vamp. He's just going to talk about his sister, right? I've words for one departed. They're not for living ears to hear. Your eyes burn with rage, yet I see the pain that lies beyond. I am here to lighten the burden of all God's creatures. Whatever you tell me is between us and the Lord. Very well, priest, as you seem quite adamant. Open your heart, my son. Tell me what burdens you. With whom do you wish to speak? She was my sister. You seem so troubled by the loss of this girl. What happened to her? She has been laid to rest. That's all you need to know. I see. And how are you feeling, my son? I feel responsible. The pain is consuming me. I have a final question for you, my son. This is of the utmost importance. Ask your question, Vicar. What would you like her to know? I'm so sorry, Mary. I promise to find who is responsible for all this. I'll put an end to this horror. You have been heard, my son, and your burden will lighten if your words are sincere. Go in peace now and live your life in the way she would have wanted. Yeah, the writing is so good. Whatever happened on this dock is between my sister and I. It does not concern God at all. Okay, um... Yeah, let's go wrap the day up. I think at over 5,000. something going on in this district. I don't know what. At over 5,000 XP, it's a good time to take a break. I just 
These random eating sounds. Come on, I want more eating sounds. <laughs> I always have this image that, you know, these aren't just sounds. Someone was sitting somewhere and recorded making these munching eating sounds. Someone got paid to sit there and munch. I always had an interest in how sound effects are created. I always thought it's it's really interesting to look into these details. And um, a a an ages ago friend of mine. I suppose that is a, an okay thing to say, and not against any TOS. Worked for a porn hotline. You know the typical sex phone hotline. And she actually worked for one that was focused on fetishes. Remorse and pain are precious when binding you to the earth. You, I remember you. Well, that was a weird interruption, but uh, yeah, let me tell the story real quick because I always thought it's a really interesting story. And she worked for... Oh my god, you shouldn't have headache. Headache is never nice. Yeah, and she worked for a fetish sex hotline, period. Like, a place you call, you pay $3.60 a minute, and then they moan into the phone. And she told me all these stories about how she creates these sound effects so people believe she's doing what she's doing. Like, how she'll stand there and iron her clothes with a bowl next to her and a water pitcher. And then she just moans and, like, pours a little bit of water into a bowl. So it sounds like she's urinating. It, it's just, I always had this really interesting story of just sitting next to a sound bank and essentially faking everything you do on the phone, which many of them did. It definitely was an interesting occupation. Nowadays, it's a bit more difficult to fake since everyone wants a webcam. But let's see who is our maker. Why does he have horns? Does he have horns? I want horns. Yes, he has antlers. I want antlers. Do I get antlers? Fear. Yeah. Be gone. I would harm no child of my making. This is your doing. You made me. Made me this creature. What are you? I am the land. You are our champion. Um. Tell me what you are. I am the whitened bones and blackened soil. The land made blood coursing through thy veins. What is it you seek? This age is sickly. An ancient poison, an older rage, brewed in a cauldron newly forged. 
This has something to do with the epidemic. Seek truth, my champion. Defeat the serpent of knowing with iron spur. The serpent of knowing. I've had enough of others making decisions for me, pretending to know how I should feel or behave. So the vampire who made me is some sort of disembodied entity? Or was he just projecting this vision in my mind? <sighs> Maybe Edgar can help me with this one. But yeah, horns alone do not make horny. But you know what? They help. <laughs> It's okay, that's that's what good cats do. Good cats are lap warmers. God protect us. You've got a leech in the hospital. Uh, yes, my hospital. My mission is to heal while you go about warring. You've set the table for a snake. I wonder why there's venom in your food. I'm growing tired of your song. You're a woodsman. McCallum, not a doctor. Return to your hunt. Remember, I've a good nose for machinations. I can flare the scent at a mile. You can't hide from the god. Why would I hide? I mean, Leave I've already killed like dozens of yours. This is sacred ground. Neutral territory. I feel like there was a quick time event like coming. Indeed. <laughs> it's like the renegade option was about to pop up. Just punch him in the face. By the sacred stole, this is very bad news. Bad news indeed. What happened? The hospital has been attacked. We have injured patients, at least one dead and several missing. This has spiraled out of control. Even the most infirm are asking to be allowed to return home. We cannot have the people lose faith in this institution. This hospital is their only hope. Of course, you're right. But we cannot afford a public scandal. It would ruin us. We must restore order and quickly. You mentioned a dead patient. Who is he? She, Jonathan. She was Miss Harriet Jones. I found her room like a slaughterhouse. Blood everywhere. The duty nurse is taking care of the mess. Very well. I'll help you. Jonathan, please. I can't rely on anyone else. And this concerns you as it involves vampires. Someone has taken advantage of our more liberal tendencies here. In what way? Jonathan, I may turn my head when you or her ladyship indulge, but I will not allow this place to become a nest for street feeders. Please, then, tell me. Sean Hampton, the man we thought we'd saved at the docks. It seems he was infected after all. So Hampton became more beast than man. Exactly. And now guard of Prewen suspects the hospital of vampire activity. Do you realize what that could mean for us? Um, I don't think they will openly attack the hospital in the current situation, but I don't know what I'm leaning towards. Do you really believe they would come for us here? in such a public venue. McCullum is a fanatic. The guard will stop at nothing. You, you don't know what they're capable of, Jonathan. Very well. Since I brought Mr. Hampton here, I will put an end to this. The sad saint of the East End. But isn't Hampton the pillar of the third area? 
Uh, the fourth area? Second. Oh, the, the docks. He's the pillar of the docks. Huh. Uh, and oh harriet jones was never in here i didn't even notice that see i suppose she was destined to die sean hampton lives and breathes for the well-being of his flock there's no other place he would go but the docks Let's talk to Bren again first. Let's see if she Good has evening, something to say Bren. about that. Good evening, Doctor. What can you tell me about the recent events in the hospital? That Mr. Hampton killed Miss Jones in her room, then ran away. And did you see all this? No. I was working by the tents when it all happened. I only entered the room when they asked me to clean up the blood. Where is Miss Jones's body? I don't know. I'd imagine the morgue. It all happened so quickly. Did you see Sean Hampton leave the hospital? I think I saw a silhouette exiting the hospital gates after the shouting started. At first I thought it was someone who was just scared, but well, maybe it was him. Oh, so she doesn't actually know who it was. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. see what she has to say oh Jonathan I cannot believe my eyes poor woman butchered by some savage scal <laughs> can we share this meal <laughs> yes and I'm afraid I'm at least partially responsible the man the scal I brought him here Jonathan how could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent. For there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel, stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was bigger than a man. Huge, in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you, but rather out doing his master's bidding. What is Ascalon? The Ascalon Club are the most powerful vampires in Britain and exert tremendous influence. Take my advice and stay well away. Uh, give me a few minutes just to wrap this conversation up. <laughs> Have you embraced this woman like the other patient, this Mr. Renfield? Her name was Amelia. And no, I did not kill her. I vowed a very long time ago that I would never take another life unless they ask. Is there sufficient vitality in the blood of the sick and dying patients? Yes, Jonathan. The hunger gnaws at me every waking hour. Frankly, I'm starving. Temptation surrounds us. Rich, vital. How can you resist? Over the years, any pleasure I once gleaned from feeding is long gone. I drink for sustenance. And though I still thirst for more, I restrain myself. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Is this a sign? The hand of God in action? Are we repellent unto heaven? I don't have the answers, Jonathan. But I believe superstition and magic is just fact awaiting the lens of science. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. 
Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon. Okay. Yeah, let's pause here. And we can totally do that. We can totally do that. Let's go to the classroom. <laughs> Scolding. Yeah, I, I didn't put it in yet. So I will just... I, I, I'll just imagine that it is there. <laughs> yeah, um, Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is something really fun. How about we make it the poor... The, the, the paranormal monster hunter. Is there actually a German word for paranormal? I... Yeah, I don't see one. I'm pretty sure that's that's what we call it too. So I suppose I'm, I'm just going to remove the paranormal. Um, you have... You, thank you for the headpads. But yeah, you often see that uh, with like more recent English words, they just stay untranslated, which is we're going to keep them as they are because that works perfectly. Uh, yeah, supernatural works. That That is a really nice one. Hold on. Um, fun fact, I still didn't install a German keyboard. I forgot every time, so every time I need an umlaut, I actually have to Google it. Uh, I used to know the ASCII codes for the umlauts. And I think I know like one or two. Actually, let me see. Nope, they don't actually work in here. Oh well, then I just need to copy and paste. Here. Yes, let, let's not tell anyone that I have to manually copy umlauts, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of that later. I swear. <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. There, see, see, it didn't take long at all. Um, so everyone knows the word word Uber. In German, Uber actually means a buff. And, you know, that, that's exactly what the word Uber is meant to mean. So you have the Uber Natural, the Supernatural Monster Hunter. And yeah, Jäger is just the German word for hunter. So the the Jäger airplane or, you know, the, like uh, we have the, the German company Jager that actually made um weren't they the ones that originally made Far Cry before they be, were bought and I think so uh, it's been a while but yeah Jager just means hunter the hunt so if you say the hunt then in German you just say the Jagd. So Jagd is the hunt and Jäger is the hunter. Where Jagd essentially means chase. It means literally the word hunt. It means to follow something aggressively, <laughs> so to speak. So yeah, I think it's a one-to-one -one translation in that case. So yeah, if you ever see a World War II Jäger, or um, actually see what was called Jäger in World War II, the infantry. See, I know nothing about it, but yeah, for example, if you uh, look at the Wehr Wehrmacht, and you have this here as a name for. Uh, hold on, let me throw a line break in this here, which essentially just means the 28th Hunter Division of the Defense Force. That, that's what Wehr Macht means. Wehr itself is the defense and is also used as the 
um, what do you call that in Sherman? The, the thing that stops water in a river. So if you have a, a barrier in the river, that's also called a veer. It's essentially guarding the river from too much flow. And Macht just means force. So Wehr Macht literally just means defense force. And not anymore, no. Um, Wehr Macht was the World War II military. Um, with the end of World War II, they decided that this is not a name that we should call our soldiers anymore. So words like, you know, everyone has heard of the German stormtroopers, the Sturmtruppen. You know, these are all terms that died in World War II and that haven't been used since. Today, they are called Soldaten, as much as, um, if you've played Final Fantasy VII, Soldat, because every Final Fantasy, or in, in general, every Japanese RPG needs to involve German names. But yeah, Ein Soldat, many Soldaten. Though in most cases, um, actually, do we still call it Wehrmacht today? I don't think so. Should I know this? I mean, do we still have the Bundeswehr? I think we still have that. I haven't been in Germany in 15 years. Yeah, we still have the Bundeswehr. So the Bundeswehr is what replaced the army after that. And what that essentially means is federal defense. The Bund or the Bundesland is the federal state. So for example, Bavaria is a Bundesland, is a state. So the Bund is just the, the federation. So the Bundeswehr is the defense of the federation, the federal defense. As you can see, once again, just another word created so it fits. But yeah, there's your German education for today. <laughs> uh, here's a really fun fact. I now have two different people who don't speak English, who regularly watch this stream and just wait for the German education, have one heck of a time, and neither of them are PC users. My family caught on to my stream, so I can only say naughty things in English. <laughs> um, yeah, Jäger, for example, is a hunter in a forest. So um, the way forests work in Germany is that they are federally owned, but they have dedicated hunters. So if you get a hunter license, you are then responsible for a specific area of forest. And that means you need to take care of the wood in there. So if, uh, say, there's rot, then you need to report that. But in return for doing all that maintenance, you will have hunting rights for overabundance. So if, say, uh, you notice that there are way too many deer and they are scratching the trees, then you have the right to hunt them. It's still a thing that is something you can still be in Germany. Yes, you can be a ranger in Germany. Um, a former boss of mine actually was a ranger. You just go through like a uh, hunter education, hunter training, you get a hunter license, usually combined with a fishing license, and then you get a designated forest right next to you, and you're held responsible for the maintenance of that forest without pay. But in return, you have hunting rights. So it's just a, a back and forth. And they come like once a year to check. And if the forest is in a bad condition and you're clearly not taking care of it, then they revoke that. It's a very interesting approach. I'm not sure if that's done everywhere in Germany, but where I grew up, very typical. And if you don't have anyone who takes care of a forest, um, then the government does. Then you have like governmentally paid rangers that go in and take care. Like same example, if you have roadkill, 
uh, if you drive your car down the street and a deer jumps out and runs into the car, you don't call the cops, you call the ranger. If you don't know who the ranger is for that location, which you most likely don't because they are individual people, then you call the cops, you tell them, and they give you the phone number for the ranger that you need to call. And then the ranger comes over, tracks the deer down, takes it down if it's injured, you know, reports it, um, takes care of the corpse, all that kind of stuff. But in 90%, the person you call is just uh, usually like a 60-year-old white guy, nearly exclusively. I always thought it was a, a really interesting way um, how we approached that whole system. I mean, I wonder how much longer it works, because I am not kidding when I say that everyone you get is a 60-year-old white man. Because the, what youth wants to make a hunter's license and then have to take care of the forest? and have to be able to pull rotten trees out and you know you always knew the words to it's, the that's a bit much to ask for nowadays i mean how many people do you know that even have the uh the, the hardware at home that they would be able to do that have like a, a tractor and something to pull wood out it's just not common what anymore. on earth happened here Let me see, is there nothing I can find? I kind of expected that I would find at least one hint for coming into this room, but... Nope, nothing. Uh, Did you not see anything? Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Can you tell me anything about recent events at the hospital? Before the shouts and the noises, I think I heard whispers coming from the stairs. Two voices. Maybe more. Did you recognize the voices? What did they say? I couldn't hear. Sounded like they were arguing or something. Hmm. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Disgust on every street corner. Interesting. So yeah, there's definitely a bit more going on. Uh-huh. Tippets, tippets. What are you up to? My suspicion meter is tingling. How do I... Uh, okay, how do I get out there? Through here? No, um... Hold on, where's the exit? How do I get up onto that windowsill? Is that... Hold on, I, I lost track where it is. So it is up here. So it should be the exit over here somewhere. But there is no exit here, so I would have to go here and then turn left and then see if I can, like, sue me up there. No? How am I meant to... I was it from the inside and I was just dumb? And uh, yeah, give me a sec for the hydrate. I just... I have the feeling that I'm probably running out of time here. Let me see if there was anything up here that I missed. Yep, too late. It's okay, he'll do it again. Um, but I'm gonna go take a look it's and figure out right. how I get there. 
before it happens. This upstairs was a no-go. You see what we have? Yeah, I know that feeling. I know that feeling. I'm... I'm the same way. There's a reason I have this redeem. Because if I wouldn't have it, I would keep forgetting. Here. Okay. Now, my question is, can I just wait? Will he just... Eventually come back. Um, you know what, let's just wait here for a couple minutes. I'm gonna hydrate real quick, just a second. Now, it doesn't look like he's coming back anytime soon. But I know he will. So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run away. Like, let's just run out of rage. More or less. See if we can leash him. And re-trigger it. Because I'm pretty certain that this should do the trick. I mean, that's what it's called. That's what we've called it in MMOs for years. I'm not going to change that now. If you leash someone, they return to their original task. Come on, Tippets, where are you? Seriously, where is he? Actually, I haven't talked to you in a while. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Can you tell me anything about the recent commotion in the hospital? I'm sure it was not your fault, Dr. Reed. My fault? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. It's just... I heard it was you who brought the murderer inside our walls. But you couldn't know, could you? Did you know Dr. Aykroyd never reported your experimental research, despite the fact he doesn't agree with it? Really? I didn't suspect he knew about my work. I must confess I am surprised. Perhaps he thinks you should realize for yourself the danger of what you're doing. See how condescending he can be? My God, he can be so irritating. Yeah, I agree. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I still think Aykroyd should die at some point soonish. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Nothing like this would have happened if we'd had enough staff and proper shifts. So you don't think the blame is ours? We all hold fast here, Dr. Reed. Our methods may differ, but we are all trying to make a difference. Hey, Melina, how is the Benui today? Hope you're having a good Friday. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Yes, Melina is good, Benui. Where is he? I leashed him so hard he despawned. Oh, 
Well, oh, look, there he is. Good evening, Dr. Tibbetts. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Nurse Brannigan has been recently accused of neglecting her professional duties. Tell me what you really think about it. This kind of protest is nothing but elitist bullshit. I trust Nurse Brannigan with my life. She has what it takes to be a great doctor. Do you really think she could be the next Elizabeth Blackwell? Believe me, Dr. Reed, a time will come when skill and skill alone will determine who can be a physician and who cannot. Yep, might take another hundred years, but we'll get there. Can you tell me anything about the recent commotion in the hospital? It's a tragedy, pure and simple. The hospital is meant to be a safe haven to all. We failed the people who trusted us with their care. Do you think I should not have brought Mr. Hampton back here? It's not your fault. You rescued that poor soul. It was the Christian thing to do. But we should have noticed his instability. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. <sighs> a woofy. See. No more Banui. That's okay. It's. Transformation is an important aspect of life. And. You know, changing yourself and. Um, just. Being whoever you want to be is important. But uh hold on. I'm gonna gonna check that out. Let's see. Is it is it something I can share? Is it no no it's not something I can share. <laughs> I think Twitch TOS would be slightly argumentative about that. But it's a cutie. Besides, if you want a good spot to post it, uh, we do have an after dark pool area. That's where you can... No, I'm gonna solve this first. But yeah, any not safe for work content, as long as it's not, you know, disgusting or illegal, it seems totally the fine. Freewin are redoubling their patrols in the district. I must be more careful. Ah, okay. The game is telling me I should sleep. I have a lot of XP, so you know what? They are 16, I'm 12. Let's give in and sleep. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, most people don't. And it's there is very little in the furry fandom that is really disgusting or illegal. And I think, like, the only thing I would absolutely draw a line is, for example, cups in the After Dark pool. It, it, it doesn't matter how old the player is, if your character depicted is not mature, then it shouldn't be in mature scenes, period. It's... It, you can call it nice and cute, and you can call it cup, but in the end, it's still, you know, underage porn. It, it, it is what it is. So this is probably the only thing where I would really draw a line. But other than that, we're not... We're doing nothing illegal here. Why am I coming here? This isn't my office. I sleep over here. I've dealt with diaper furs. I never want to do that again. I'm not saying diaper furs are bad people. I'm just saying I don't want much to do with them. <laughs> it, uh. I might have had some uncomfortable run-ins. Okay, first things first. This blood spare is amazing. 
Uh, but... But this is just a bit cheaper and a bit more damage for 2,000. You know what? Let's look at our ultimates. Rage, Abyss, and Blood Cauldron. Okay. So, what do we have here? Rage. Some abilities are so powerful that even vampires fear them. Rage is one of them. The vampire loses control and unleashes the beast within to do their dirty work. The beast teleports itself on targets around them, striking with an unfettered fury. Because of its dark nature, this type of ability cannot be used too often. So... Okay. I'm gonna mute for a second because I'm on the border of sneezing. I don't want to annoy you with that. <laughs> Might be a second. Nope, false alarm. You know, Kit has this amazing feature. If he is bordering on a sneeze, all he has to do is stare into light. And then he can sneeze. And I'm so jealous of that. I have done... I have done everything. I can... I can look into the sun. I can pour... I can pour pepper into my nose. It doesn't matter. It, it's hurting. It doesn't make me sneeze. Okay. Abyss. The vampire concentrates, summoning the shadows in their purest, darkest form. These shadows capture the vampire's prey and toys with it, like a cat with a mouse. After a brief moment, the shadows strike, impaling their prey. Or Blood Cauldron. The vampire concentrates their power on one target and makes the victim's blood boil. Through this process, the vampire will regenerate and absorb part of the target's blood. The vampire will release their prey after a few seconds, leaving damaged blood cells within them. These cells will continue to impact their host before exploding after a short time. The blast will affect any living creature near the host. Oof. Which one? This sounds like an auto kill. Like. I don't know, that sounds cool. It sounds very fun. The blood cauldron sounds boring. Yeah, you know what? Let's try this. Tactical. What it was tactical? Oh, tactical was sneak. No, let's not. I, I don't care. We, do, we don't need to sneak and... S but I can... Raise the bite. That is very cheap. And raise the blood we get from it. Hmm. Oh yeah, I could upgrade the regeneration. Okay, so either... So right now we have 250 healing. And 3 recovery. So either we stay to 3 recovery, but the healing goes down and the cost up? One hundred. So why does this say 250 healing? And then this says 200 healing plus 100 healing. And this is just 300 healing, but less recovery. Uh, I think... Oh, but this is a lot more blood from 10 to 20. Yeah, let's pick the top one. I still don't quite get the difference, to be honest. Okay, we have 1300 points left. We could upgrade both health and stamina. 
Yeah, let's do that. There. Yeah, I think that looks good. That looks good. Now let's see how much sleep screws up everyone. Utah police raids in Whitechapel. As of late, the rumors that surround Whitechapel are ripening into facts. In the last three months, the police have suspected the district of hosting what might be the heart of London's medical, sorry, medicinal black market. But of course, these suspicions will remain assumptions, for no task force or additional police presence has been sent to Whitechapel. No large drug stocks have been found, nor no crime lords arrested. The masquerade has only been planned as a desperate attempt to conceal the blatant incompetence of the London City Council's Board of Health by giving the populace a cheap and easy victory, while the epidemic spreads more and more each day. Worst of all, when you take time to review the most recent statistics, you discover that the district of Whitechapel is coping with the disease much better than the other parts of the city. Is it a miracle? Evidence of the activity of an illegal but efficient medical underground? More proof the authorities' criminal incompetence? All I know is this. If a Londoner has a better chance to survive the epidemic by choosing to live in this godforsaken borough, I'm ready to move to any cheap, flea-infested flat some shady landlord will agree to rent me right now. That's good news. What else happened? Um. Nice. Let's see the docks. Okay, so the docks are stable, with her being the only real issue, but she doesn't talk to me until I have mesmerized three. The hospital looks good, but we need one cold, two cold. Three cold and a migraine. Three cold and a migraine. Three cold and a migraine. There. Okay, now let's start our daily round. First, we need Pippa and Newton. Pippa should be downstairs, and Newton should be outside. No, Melina is. Ah, what what you gonna do now? What you gonna do now? <laughs> now I caught you. <laughs> Pippa, Pippa, there you are. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Doctor Reed. Do you need medical help yourself, nurse? I'm afraid I've contracted some illness, Dr. Reed. Not under my watch, nurse. Take this. <laughs> You'll feel better. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. Yeah, I definitely have to check. But yeah, uh, don't feel bad putting that in the after dark uh, pool either if you don't mind sharing it. Be my guest. No one here bites if you put in some furry porn. We're all humans. Well, I mean, we're not. We're not humans, that's the point. Hello again, Mr. Blight. Good evening, we're all non-humans. You're doing your rounds as usual. <laughs> Hello. Happy Friday. Oh, wow, we're already having a bit of a memory issue. <laughs> yeah, if you aren't aware, this game can have a bit of a memory leak. So I might have to restart it every now and then if it gets a bit too choppy. Do you need medical attention, sir? Afraid so. In the war, I was always worried about picking up something. 
getting some infection. Unfortunately, I've got that fear in London now. Throughout history, some diseases have done more damage to armies than any weapon created by man. You are wise to be careful. You're working at the Pembroke Hospital, aren't you? That's a good enough reason for me and Oswald to go there. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Yeah, it's... I mean, let's face it, a memory leak is literally the, the most common issue in gaming nowadays. It's... I don't get how Unreal Engine and Unity aren't fixing it. Because they are the ones that would need to implement the tools to handle memory leaks better. That to implement the tools that free up the space. Okay, yeah, we need baits, um, but we're going back to the docks first now. But I'm not a game developer. I'm not a designer. I'm not a programmer. I'm just a smartass that things things should be better than they are we have a killer oh yeah right wait 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 I have an ultimate now uh I gotta equip that okay so that is both triggers at once. Well, that was fun. It didn't do as much damage as I assumed it would, but... I'm sure that will be fun once upgraded. Stop, stop giving me your flashlight of holiness. Yeah, uh, there are a few upgrades I can apply to it. I was just hoping that the very first version of it does a bit more damage than that. Yeah, I know. doesn't quite switch the target when you expect it does. Hey Turquoise! How are you today? Come on in, make yourself comfortable. We're just chopping up people like firewood. Uh, docks, yes, here. Yeah, one of 
I do like that axe. It feels very nice and physical. So give me a two-handed axe and I would be happy. But I haven't seen a two-handed yet. Yeah, how are you today, Turquoise? Hope you're having a good Friday. Look at it! Fish <laughs> oh, Chop, 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 chop. first there I wanted to make sure it's worth it <laughs> he probably is no more loot no oh Now let's meet the skull. Actually, uh, he. No oh wait, he doesn't get medication. I thought he gets medication. Or was it last time? Oh no, there was uh, Bates, not Dickby. Uh, let's talk Good to evening, them. Ms. Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? The sad saint? I heard he was mugged or something. Yes, he was. But he left hospital recently. You don't say. Well, I suppose it's good news for the homeless and the useless. Ask them, they must know something. Goodbye, Miss Cox. Let me see if her lover knows anything. You again. What do you want? Do you know where I can find Sean Hampton? I need to talk to him. The sad saint. Why on earth do you want to talk to him? He was one of my patients at the Pembroke Hospital. Oh, yeah. I heard the poor bastard had been abducted by some cat. You, you better ask Tom Watts. He knows Sean Hampton well. Tom Watts, that was the Goodbye, Mr. tavern owner. Oh yeah, the I'm like I, she's on my shit list. She is I mean her death is already a fact. She just doesn't know it. Mark my words, miss. These murders are the work of a vampire. A vampire? Whatever do you mean? I'm a tracker of these creatures. A vampire hunter. You best be off to your hunting then. For if the sewer dog is back and hunting all these poor folk, he needs a catching. A sewer dog? What's it look like? It's an old story. A monster with daggers for teeth and icy claws. He comes of a sudden, nighttime, claiming innocence, then vanishes. Teeth, claws, murders by night? Your sewer dog is my business. He's the kind of prey I hunt, milady. You're kind of getting into her personal space there, sir. Not a drop of blood left in his body. 
This is the work of a vampire. But we meet a new person. Good evening, sir. Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton, vampire <laughs> hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? <laughs> really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist. And they're close. Yeah, Mr. they still Throgmorton. sound like tax men. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. <laughs> I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. What can you tell me about this neighborhood? Did you hear about what happened to Jack Gillingham? Poor boy. It's a shame I wasn't around to protect him. It's impossible to protect everyone. The violence seems endemic in this part of town. But it's my duty. I am convinced Jack Gillingham was killed by a vampire. These evil rodents are spreading like a plague. So, how exactly are you protecting these people? I'm curious. I patrol late at night, investigating anything unusual. I try and encourage people to stay indoors, but... People are careless. Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight, they're afraid of garlic and holy symbols, and they also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. What kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. Yeah, I'm sure he's a very experienced vampire hunter. Have you heard of the guard of Prewan? Of course. They're dedicated hunters. A little militant for my taste, but they do let anyone join. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, in case you aren't aware, just dropping that note real quick, um, I am... Uh, I have scheduled a golfit session today, and I just had to make sure I get the time correct. And, yeah, uh, noon... E Wow, I actually know I didn't get the time correct and no one corrected me. <laughs> I said at noon Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. I might have been slightly intoxicated when I did that calculation. <laughs> yeah, let's correct it. Uh, at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, we're going to play a game of golf it. Golf it. If you have golf it, um, send me a friend request on Steam or just put a note in the channel and join us. We're gonna be like four, five people so far. So yeah, if you have any interest, hop on in. You don't have to be in voice chat if you don't wanna. But, you know, just say hi. Have a little fun game with us. Were you ever tempted to join the guard yourself? I did think about it, but I'm more of a silent hunter. They're more of a sanitary militia. So you hunt alone? That sounds risky. Vampires are just like every other predator. They hunt when they're hungry and follow certain patterns. It's just a matter of observation and patience. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour, but I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. I'm sure your intentions are good, but people who sleep there, they have plenty of reasons to hide. I could make you tell me, but I respect your refusal. You really believe Sean is a saint, don't you? All I will say is this. 
Gossip has it that when he was a child, he was molested by a priest of all people. Funny thing is, though, it only strengthened his faith. I see. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a bartender and good judge of character. If he talks to you, then it's fine by me. Okay, he is healthy. Goodbye. And good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. So now let's first talk to Cavendish. In case she has anything new. You're still working at this hour. That's what I call dedication. Miss Cavendish, would you be willing to help me locate Sean Hampton? You better ask Tom, sir. Why not answer me directly? We respect the privacy of our customers here, sir. Only Tom can decide who to speak to and what he'll say to them. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Let me also talk to him, see if there's anything new. Good evening, Mr. Delaney. What? Ah, oh, you're a doctor. But I think we pretty much covered him. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? I really don't know. I heard he'd been abducted. I don't know if he's back. Who could tell me then? About the sad saint. I'll try asking Tom what's about him. Yeah, I feel like half the people in this game know more than they are saying. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Like you always got to come back and, and talk to them later when you've gained their trust. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Let's see. I don't think you have anything new either. Nope. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Oh, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. It would explain his faith and need to help everyone. The important thing is I find him quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Okay. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for a time. Right, so go west. Oh, not, not here west, but out there west. The other west. And then turn left. few more ads. Oh my 
god, it won't let me switch the target. Just keep spawning. I think they might. That's the feeling I have. It's that they will probably keep spawning at the very least to provide blood. this to fully heal. Yes, nearly fully healed, come on. I like cleaning up. There we go. There. Nice and orderly. No loot? Oh, that makes me sad. The wounds on this corpse are deep. The result of rabid rage. If this is Sean's doing, he's become a murderous beast. I mean, my understanding is that once they are scale... Um... Okay, Minlina, I I have this image in my head. Do you know what the game was called? Yes, there are several that do that, but this specific image, was that a bullet storm? That specific image where he like keeps trying to turn around because he keeps looking at that fire and then it explodes and he flies off. I have this exact image in my head and I think that might have been bullet storm. She don't remember. But if you remember, uh, let me know. Uh, it must have been Bulletstorm because I never played Call of Duty or Medal of Honor. So yeah, it, it probably was Bulletstorm. Such a good game. I mean, it used to be. Then they brought out like that remaster that essentially required you to repurchase the game, if I remember right, because they didn't offer an upgrade to it at all. No, 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 no. I can't believe I'm doing this. It's locked. Through here? Yeah, I think so. Look lively! It's on to us! He's dead! Murdering bastard! That is a level 22. Yeah, that 
it's a big boy. But he's very sensitive to my tentacle attacks. Ow! Okay, don't get hit. See, it's fine as long as you don't get hit. So let's try that again. Yeah, level 22 is a bit higher than what I was planning to tackle. But it's doable. Now you go fight each other first. Or not. Yeah. Especially this attack, which he seems to be rather weak against. There. Problem solved. See if he had some loot. Yeah, I know. It's it's when you have the right weapon and you just hit someone, it hits like a truck. Okay, through here. Crush the leaf. <laughs> There he is. Come on. Come on. I wonder if I can instant kill him. Oh, not quite. Okay, okay, I'm coming up. <laughs> I stunned the life out of him. Okay, and there should be nothing up here because we already cleaned this out. We just gotta get down there. And I suspect that's where we continue. I have this first. Blood. Come on, come on here, ready, ready. No, 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 no. This is despicable. No, 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 Let me see while we're here real quick. Um, we should have... Ah, oh, there it is. A refill. There, for some shotgun shells. Yeah, and it's even being delivered to you. They come right up. I mean, who are you to turn down this gift? How do I get in there? Like every entrance. It's locked, all right. And 
Yeah, now we're heading out. Okay, so let's follow the right wall. Because I clearly missed the entrance. Not up there. Not through there. And not through there. It wasn't through there, was it? I'm pretty sure that was also a dead end. Yeah, can't get up there. And there's nothing to go through there. And thank you for the head pits. Um, yes, that's where we want to go. And I will. We have to stop it. There, yeah, that was an instant kill. Just broke his spine. I just batmaned him. There. <laughs> is, that, is that a term I can use? Can I batman people? Yeah, do let me hydrate. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, I, I batman the shit out of him. That's how we get inside. Let me just make sure there's nothing else out here. But... It does look like I've been here. Are you hiding? Do I have to come for you? Is that a garlic launcher? Is that what it is? I think it is. I have this thirst for pancakes. Ah, oh, that is a bad thirst. You gotta resist it. Especially when they are just choosily. This poor man has just been slaughtered by a vampire. The body's still warm. Choosily flowing with maple syrup. What do you put on your pancakes? Yes, good choice. And um, here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that US Nutella and European Nutella are very different? I, I actually dislike European Nutella. European Nutella is very chocolatey and tastes much darker, where the US version is much more sugar-based and sweeter. They, they taste completely different because the European dark chocolate flavor just doesn't sell here. People don't want that. Oh, 
Like I, I always dislike Nutella. I would always buy the cheap no-name brand instead because it just tasted better. Nutella always tasted a bit bitter and ugh. And then I came to the US and tasted Nutella and wow, it's good here. Here it tastes like a, an Aldi no-name brand in Germany. It's really weird. So yeah, if you ever get the chance to taste American Nutella, do it. Definitely do it. Yeah, I really like this attack. It's so fun. As much as I like this one. It just does such a nice amount of area damage. Once a cat claims your hand, you're fucked. You're not gonna get it back. are special beans. They're definitely some of the best beans. I kind of wish we could have a cat, but I think at least one of our dogs would love to have a cat and would just hang out with it and chill and would just do cat things together. And I think the other would be very unhappy. Because the other would probably try to play with the cat until he gets his face handed over to him on a platter and, and then all shit would break loose. He's a very blunt and very clumsy 100 pound heavy player. So he will play with a Chihuahua the same way he does with a Rottweiler. He will jump on them, he will bounce, he will suppress them, he will dominate them. <laughs> so, yeah, he's not a dog that would work well with a cat around. Yeah, I imagine, I mean, I'm sure he's missing his brother. Is this a new area we're now in? No. Yeah, it's the performance is now clearly pushing. Um, maybe we should uh, break here. You know what? This is a good time to break. Let's let's restart it here, so we have a bit more performance. And actually, while we do that, we're gonna take a very short break. Uh, let me see if Brazel is working again. Maybe, hello? Because um, earlier Brazel was actually down, so I didn't have background music. But it looks like it's going again. Yes, it's working again, so... 
I'm gonna uh, leave you for five minutes, take a very quick restroom break, and then I'm gonna be back with a bit of a change of game. And you can definitely stay tuned for that because it's gonna be amazing. It's a Metal Gear Solid clone done with furries in 12 days. So it's a really, really cute demo that we're gonna play. Expect some adorableness. But yeah, you'll see that in five minutes for now. Be right back. And I am back again. I know it's a good tale, isn't it? <laughs> That's a very... very active music. I don't think that is my playlist. 